Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna install this lighted mirror here. It's kind of like installing a flat screen TV. You basically have to get power behind it, an outlet that you can hide, and then you're gonna mount the mirror. So it's nice when you're in a remodel situation like this, and you're down to the studs because you can run the power at this point without any major headache. With that, there's a few caveats to getting this right where you want it. So one, you've gotta find out where you want this mirror. And that's gonna depend on vanity size and all that. So that's a little bit subjective, but essentially what I'm gonna do here is I'm assuming I'm gonna use a 25 inch with vanity. So, hold on here, we got a flush. Oh, here's my tape. I've been looking for this for like a couple hours now and it's right here. So there we go. So you wanna know kind of, well, pretty exactly where you want the mirror to sit before you figure out the power situation. Since I'm down the studs here, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna figure out where I need to put the outlet so it can fit behind this mirror and be hidden. And two, while I'm at the stud level, I'm gonna go ahead and put in some blocking just so when I mount the brackets to mount this mirror, I can go ahead and secure them into some wood framing as opposed to using some sort of drywall anchor. So I arbitrarily kind of picked a height that I think will work for us. We've got tall people and short people that will be using this bathroom. This is a relatively small mirror, so I kind of picked a height and I hope will work for everybody. In hindsight, I probably would have ordered a taller mirror, but we're going to go with what we have and make it work. It's going to be centered here. I drew a dash that marks the center line for where I need this mirror to be. And then I figured out my height and then I marked my bottom as well. So we know the mirror is going to sit within the space. So I got to put an outlet box in here, but I got to put it in so it doesn't interfere with anything. I look at the back of this mirror. You can see I have this space from here to here to here to here. So basically I found out what that space is. I think this is a 13 inch space. It's 13 and a half. So half of that is six and three quarters. So from that, I found my center line. I measured over six and three quarters and that puts me about here and six and three quarters and I drew a line here and then I found the height from here to here and then marked lines like that. Basically I know that anywhere within this box I should be able to put my electrical box. So what's going to work out in this situation is I'll be able to put my box somewhere on this stud like this which is great that's nice and convenient but i'm also going to go ahead and put some blocking in here like this hold on i'm also going to put some blocking in here like this and that will allow me to screw the mounting brackets to uphold this mirror up into wood it's just since I have the opportunity, I might as well do it. I feel better being screwed into the wood framing versus the drywall anchor. So I know where those anchors are gonna go. So the brackets go right under here. So this line that I marked right here, if I put my block somewhere right in here, the mounting bracket should tie into that just nicely. Should tie into it nicely. So I'm gonna put the outlet box here, a framing member here, and another one down here. For the tie-in bracket, there's kind of a safety tie-in, so I'll put two blocks in, and then we'll be ready to do the rough wiring. I'm just gonna use some scrap lumber I have. Lumber's actually real expensive right now, so save your scrap, by the way. And I'm going to screw it in with deck screws. Okay, do the same thing on that side. This block here will be for the bottom. There's kind of a bottom safety piece of hardware that keeps the mirror from slipping up. The mirror slips on hinges here, this bottom piece will have something that screws into the wall that keeps it from pivoting up and be able to come out. So we'll put a block in here to mount that piece of hardware to as well. And sometimes it's a little tricky to drill in here. Ideally, I would drill from the studs this way. And I did that up here. It's a little tricky, so I'm just gonna toenail in from the wood into here. It's a nice cut feet piece, it's nice and snug. And that toenail screwing will make this get connected. Good stuff. Gotta love impact drivers. This is still my clearance space for the outlet, so I'm just going to put the outlet box right here. This is just a normal receptacle box. There's these little tabs I want to pop hole in here. So that means I can feed my wire when I'm ready. Put the receptacle box in like this. Just slide it up against the stud. It's probably a good spot there. These are nice because they come with the nails on already, so I just tap it into the stud. Put my muffs on. 
now we have the outlet box where we will put the electrical outlet that will power the lighted mirror. Now, even though we're putting a lighted mirror in here, the lighted mirror is probably not gonna be the primary light source for when someone's using this vanity. So we still wanna put another more normal vanity light in here. So I'm deciding to put a light up here and that will be on its own power leg as well. So this will be one switch going to the mirror light and then this light up here will be on its own switch as well. What I need to do is find where I want this light to be. It's somewhat subjective, but I can base it off the center line of my intended vanity. At this point, I'm trying to commit to a 25 inch vanity. This would be my center line up here and mark my center line. And then I marked a height. So that's where I want my light fixture to be. And then what I need to do is get an electrical box up here. As you can see, there's nowhere to attach this. So I could do a couple of things. I can put some framing in and it secures us to the framing. But one thing I've noticed with some of these boxes when you use these for lighting, sometimes the trim fixtures for the lights do not cover these corners. So another solution that will help solve both those things is using a round, this is a thing they call this like a ceiling box. That tends to fit better with light fixture coverings. So these are hidden, but again, you gotta get it in here. So the concept with these is I can put this in here, spread it out, and then I have my fixture. So I'm gonna install that now. And of course, these plumbing pipes are gonna make it kind of a pain, but traditionally what you would do is put these in and then tap these little uh, wedges in, or points, I guess, whatever you wanna call them, in with a hammer, get it on both sides if you get it where you want it, and then come back with a screw or a nail or something and secure it off. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do that. I may not be able to get in with a hammer, so I may just have to start straight with a screw, get it in. And I'm pretty sure if you have these things turned backwards like this, it will fit in a two by four stud. If you're pushed up against the drywall on the back, this should sit just the right depth when you go to put your drywall on it, fits nice and tight for this. So I moved this out of the way, and of course, I got plumbing here, so it's a pain in the ass. So I got to try to get a screw in a little hole over here. So I put an extension on my drill. I'm going to try to get it at a weird angle like this. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side, just using like a two-inch deck screw I had laying around. There we go, it's not pretty, but it works. There's two little screws in here, and we just kind of tighten them down to clamp onto the backer board. And there we go, we have a light box. Just to double check our depth here. And we have one little problem, it's not out far enough. So I messed up. This needs to be out a little bit further. Live, you learn. Okay, so I made the assumption that if I push these bars all the way back that this box would end up just proud of the two by fours a little bit for the drywall. I was wrong. We all know what happens when we assume makes an A out of you and me. So, anyway, I'm going to have to adjust this, come out a little bit more to make sure we have a little bit of lip sticking past our two by four framing. So this has some depth to go into the drywall back it out, move it forward uh, about a three eighths of an inch and we'll be good. Okay, so I just repeated that process, remounted this to make it a little bit more proud. I'm gonna check, as you can see, we have a little bit sticking out, which is pretty good. A little less than three eighths of an inch, that's okay. We'd rather have a little deeper than proud, that's for sure. Now we're gonna run our wires. Now that I have both my receptacle box for the lighted mirror and my box for the vanity light, now I can go ahead and run the wire back to the switch source. Now what I like to do is run the wire backwards because I'm gonna have to kill power in here when I go in to tie everything in. And I wanna keep my lights and everything on as long as I can. So I'm gonna wire these two boxes and then run, leave the wire slack to like disconnect the power to hook everything up in the switch box. So what I'm gonna use here is 12-3 wire. Now 12 gauge wire is, relatively speaking, it's heavy gauge wire. This mirror, it's an LED light. These lights up here are gonna be LED. They're not gonna draw much uh, power at all and they don't necessarily need this thick gauge wire. However, this is a bathroom circuit. It is a 20 amp circuit. So I think technically that everything's supposed to be run 
on the 12 gauge wire. And I think the theory is here, and I'm not claiming to be an electrician, but the thought is if for some reason anybody ever plugs anything in that's too high powered, that the thinner wire can melt before the actual breaker trips. So that's why I want to use this heavy gauge wire to keep everything consistent. 12.3 is 12 gauge wire. It actually has four wires. It has a red, a black, a ground, and a neutral. The red and blacks will be your hot. So what I can do is run this one wire assembly back to the switch box and then run the two lights off this one wire. First thing I'm gonna do is run a leg of wire from here to here. So I'm just gonna cut some of my 12 gauge off here. Just kind of get a rough, somewhere like that's probably good. I'm just using snips to cut it. And first thing what I'm gonna do here is I don't need the four wires here. So I'm gonna pull out, in this case, the black wire. This is just gonna be for one switch leg. We don't wanna leave it, make it confusing. So I'm pulling out this little piece of black wire. We only need the three wires to get to here. And then we need to find the little flex tab in the back here and try to go through that. There we go. So we've got the wire coming out of here and then down to here. Now I'm going to actually use all the wires in this 12-3 wire. Again, it's four wires in this sleeve. I'm going to put that in here and then I'll run this slack back to the switch box and I'll tie everything in there. But... There we go. So now at this point, I'll just get rid of the sheathing. I'm just going to lightly score it with a razor and I'm going to do it down the middle because that's where the copper wire is because I don't want to cut through these other wires. There we go. Okay, and now I'll just roll these back up into here because we don't need them quite yet. And then I'll do the same thing for the wires up there as well. Next, I'm going to run my wire down to where they'll be tied into the switch box. So this is my line coming from my light box. This will be our switch box. So I've got it stapled to the wall down here. I'm just going to kind of cut it to a rough length. And then go ahead and put it in the box here. This is the four wires going out to both the main vanity light and the mirror light. This is the main power circuit coming in from the breaker box. This is a four wire setup that goes out and feeds the bathroom fan and the shower light. And then this actually just feeds other circuits outside of the bathroom in this room here. So now I need to tie them all together. All right, so next step, I'll strip back our wires. Just kind of do a light score mark in the middle of the wire and then pull the sheathing back. And so what we're going to do is power this whole bathroom and this circuit off this GFCI. So this is our power and wire. So the pot coming in will go to the brass side like this. And then the white side will go to the silver screw. And then we'll pull power out of this side and neutral out of the side to feed the rest of these. And that will protect the entire circuit with the GFCI breaker there. All right, so these are the switches I'm using. It's two switches in one. And your line power comes in here. This is a power basically from your breaker box and then it splits it up over these two if you leave this little prong and this is a jumper. So power is going to this side and this side and these are your power legs out. So what I'm going to do is just connect my switches right now and I just made this little jumper wire, black wire, a stripped area here, stripped area here. So I'm going to connect it to this. So this is our GFI. This screw here says this is the load. So that's the power going out of the plug. So I'm going to screw this down, snug it. It just basically crimps the wire in there. Okay, so here's what we got. Sort of our three wires set up there. So we're going to have these three in there. And what I did is I simply just made a power jumper. So power coming out here is going to go to this switch and this switch. 
Okay, now I'm gonna run the ground in a similar way and tie all the ground screws together. I'm gonna start by taking a piece of copper wire, putting a loop in it like that, and I'll start on this side. Just like that, I'm just gonna screw it down. And I'll come over like this. What I do now is make another loop. Okay. Okay, and then screw it. Okay, and then. Okay, now that it's nice and snug, tighten this bad boy down. Okay, then we have this little pigtail, if you will, that we can tie into our other grounds. So basically these switches and this outlet's kind of preloaded to hook up to everything in here. Now we have power coming out of this, going to this switch and this switch, and then these are all grounded together. So now what I'm gonna do is do a neutral pigtail. This is our load. It's gonna go in here, tighten it down. So now we essentially need to attach all the grounds and all the neutrals. So all the grounds in here, the brass wires, need to be connected to this and together. So I think we'll do that first. Okay, so these are all our grounds. Move everything else out of the way for a minute. All our grounds. Got one, two, three, four. So right now we've got the ground coming out of all these switches, going into here, connecting all the grounds together. We can now Screw them all down. And then I will cut off the excess. So we are now grounded. Okay, so now I'm gonna attach all my neutrals coming out of the GFCI. And I'm gonna use this little connector here. This will connect four wires together and just kind of snap them in place. Uh, pretty easy to take up less space than a wire nut, so I thought, Good way to go. I've never used these before. They did a practice run with them and they seem pretty cool. It says to strip these back about a half inch. All we do is push these guys in place. And then finally, okay, there we go. Okay, so now we have all the neutrals connected coming out of the GFCI. So that means that the neutral load coming off all the circuits will be tied into this and protected. And now we got to get the load in to the GFCI right here. And we also need to get the power into it as well. So here is our neutral side in. Put it in there. This is a neutral coming from our breaker. Push that in. So the wire coming up here is not GFCI protected but coming out it will be. And then we also need the power into there. Then I need to take this wire and sneak it in under here. This is where things get tricky. And just snug it down. Okay, so now we have power coming in, going through the GFCI, and then coming out, protecting the switch circuits. So now all I have to do is tie the power from our vanity and our mirror light into this switch and then our bathroom fan and the bathroom light in here so i'm going to put this is our vanity light here and it's a little long a little note here on the side of these uh switches they have like a wire depth gauge and how far it should be so i cut this one a little long so we'll this one in here, and then I'll put the, the red one. This will be the switch for the for the mirror light up top. Maybe I'll switch it around, actually. I'm going to put the black one up top and the red one down below just because it, it it's in the same sequence, the mirror light lower than the vanity light. So when you turn it on, if you turn the upper switch on, I'll turn on the higher switch. Turn on lower switch, turn on the light in the mirror, which is lower. All right, and then see this? We just slide them in these little grooves and then tighten them down. Same here. Okay, so now this switch to our vanity light and our mirror is all hooked up, and I'm gonna do the same thing on this switch for the lights. All right, and now we just push everything back in. I hope it fits. Screw everything 
in. And there it is. Put a test light up there, see if it works. And it's working. Now we have the electric roughed in. We've got the outlet box for the lighted mirror. And then this mess up here, I have a temporary light uh, hooked into it, but this is the electric box for the traditional vanity light that will hang over the mirror. And that's all going back down into the switch arrangement here. The power coming in is going through a GFCI. That is feeding all the switch currents in the continuation current that leaves this bathroom. So everything will be GFCI protected. And then we have switches that control everything and we are good to go. So this wall at this point is pretty much ready for drywall. So now I'm finally at the point where I can install the mirror. Just need to install this outlet and then mount everything to the wall where we want it. And we're gonna have this nice new lighted mirror set up and ready to go. This is a bathroom circuit. I ran a whole new circuit for this bathroom. It's a 20 amp circuit that is protected by a GFI. Since it is a 20 amp circuit, the wiring should be 12 gauge wire, which is thicker wire and everything should be a 20 amp fixture. So what I'm gonna use is this 20 amp outlet here. Now granted, this mirror is gonna use just a little bit of power. It's not gonna need 20 amp protection for that. However, since this is a 20 amp circuit, to keep things kosher, I'm gonna go ahead and use the 20 amp outlet. And I'm just gonna use a single outlet here. I'm gonna put it in the box, so I'll show how to install that, but it's pretty simple for the most part. We're gonna take the red wire in this case, which would generally be the black wire, but since it's on a switch, the red wire is my hot wire. That will go to the bronze screw. The white wire will go to the silver screw, that's the neutral, and then the bare copper wire will go to the ground lug here. I'm gonna screw it in the wall, and then our outlet's ready to go. Then we will mount the mirror. Okay, so here we go. Now I have the power off to this outlet. This whole circuit's shut off. I'm using a different light. I'm just gonna pull my wires out here. And they actually look like they're a decent length. So the first thing what I'm gonna do is a lot of times these little outlets will have a wire strip gauge. It tells you, hey, that's how long it needs to be stripped. So I'm gonna get a rough idea. And it's about a half to three quarters of an inch, 12 gauge wire. So I'm going to use my wire strippers at the 12 gauge and then strip. Do the same thing with the neutral wire as well, half inch to three quarters. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is start with the ground wire. And it basically has to go wrap around the screw Take the grounding, the bare copper wire, the ground wire, put a loop in it. Okay, gonna slide it over like this. Okay, pinch it. All right, and we're gonna snug that sucker down. All right, so we're good there. Next, we'll take the red wire. Again, that's gonna go to the copper side. And in this case, we just have to slide it into one of these holes here, like that, and we tighten this down. And then what that does is there's a little clamp in there and it clamps the wire in there nice and snug. And we'll do the same thing on this side, the white. I'm gonna go on this side. Either hole's okay, tighten it down. I like to go in the hole that, like so since we're going clockwise, I put the wire on the clockwise side so it kind of screws with it as opposed to pushing up against it. All right, pretty simple. So now that is wired up. Now we just gotta get it back in here. Push it back in. And then we just put these screws in there and then screw it in. This one going too. All right, got that nice and snug in there. Now I just need to put the trim cap on. I'm just using an old circle one that I had. It's a little beat up, but it's gonna be covered by a mirror, so it shouldn't matter. Just slide that on. These screws go in these little holes here. There we go, and you don't wanna tighten these trim covers too much because they will crack if you do. But there, that is now installed. Okay, so now I'm going to mark for the positioning of the mirror. Now I planned all this out again before I built everything behind the wall. So I know about where it's supposed to go, but now I got to translate that to this fresh face wall. Now what I would normally do is use painter tape to stick it on the wall and mark my measurements so I can peel that off without leaving any marks. I don't have painter's tape today, so I'm gonna make my marks on the wall, and I'm gonna try to make them all behind where the mirror will cover, and worst case scenario, I'll put another coat of paint on. But first thing I'm gonna do is mark the center of the mirror. This is gonna be a 25 inch vanity, so I want that to be centered, so I want it 12 and a half inches. I'm lucky here that the light is already centered, 
at 12 and a half. There's a screw here. I'm gonna use that as reference, but I'm also gonna take another measurement from the wall and sort of mark 12 and a half inches. And again, that's gonna be covered by the mirror. So this will be the center of the mirror. And what I'm gonna do is make a mark on the mirror for the center too. So what I'm doing to get my measurements is I'm using this as a reference because I know where my framing is and everything in reference to this outlet box. So in this case, I know this is my center. It's 12 and a half inches off the wall. However, I know the top of the mirror is going to be about seven inches above this box and my framing is about in here. So what I'm going to do is I need to know where these brackets are going to go, where I mount the brackets. Those brackets are about three and a half inches above this. Make a mark three and a half inches above this. And then I'm going to use my level here. Kind of make a line about here or about there. Okay, so that is going to be about where my brackets go. Go ahead and mark my center point again. I'm just going to use the level. Okay, that's my center point. I know off of that I got to go three three quarter inches for the brackets. So. All right, that's the bracket, three. All right, so that is where my brackets will be centered. Now we put the brackets in. And I know there's a piece of stud back there, so I can screw right into that stud. And now what I'm gonna do is line my bracket up and mark for holes I wanna drill. I've already got a level line here. I'm just gonna kind of roughly center it. This mirror has some play on it, so it doesn't have to be super exact. I'm just gonna mark a little spot holes here okay so there's that and we'll do the same thing here all right so i will pre-drill those holes for my screws so these are the mounting screws that came with it and what i'm going to do is use a drill bit that's slightly smaller than the screw to pre-drill holes again i have some blocking back here already if i didn't have blocking in here i'd have to use some drywall anchors in this case i'm going straight to the studs so i'm going to pre-drill those studs the same thing over here now this is a pretty simple mounting bracket here essentially it's going to mount on the wall this way which leaves that little angle and there's some slots on the back side of the mirror so the whole thing will just kind of slide in and sit on this so it's important we install these the right way with this little hinge sticking out and then here we go we're just gonna hand tighten this a little bit Since we're going into the stud, this is going to be a nice, solid connection. All right. You can see the lip on this end, and that's where the mirror is going to hang. Okay, so now I'm pretty much ready to bring in the mirror and do a dry hang on here to see how it fits. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and install this bottom bracket on the mirror temporarily. That's going to help me mark my hole where I'm going to drill this and secure it to the wall. It comes with two little screws to do that, so I'll attach that before I put it on the wall. Okay, so here is the moment of truth. You can see underneath the top of the mirror here, there are these little slots. That's where these things will hang. You can see I put the bottom bracket on temporarily. And so here's what we're gonna do. Again, the moment of truth. Hopefully we did it okay. Okay, okay, so it's in there. And now what I'm gonna do is take my marker and mark underneath here and then i can drill that bottom bracket now that i've got it on there the way i want it i gotta take it off to put the other bracket in. now to put that bracket on the wall okay so i made a mark for where my bracket's gonna go and i'm just i've already got a stud back here as well so i'm going to free drill it And I got a piece of wood in the wall back there, so I don't need a drywall anchor. And this bracket will keep the mirror from getting pulled up. It's definitely not going anywhere. Okay, so now I get to hang it again, and I gotta plug it in first. Okay, good. Plug it in. We'll check everything. Okay, so lastly, I'm just screwing the safety screws back into the safety bracket. And that just makes sure this won't pull up. So there's no way this mirror can get ripped off the wall without taking those screws out. So it is installed at this point. All right, so the big test. 
So pretty cool. Now, I want to leave the protective coating until I'm done with the bathroom. I got a lot of work left to do. But you can already see, this is a pretty fantastic looking mirror and pretty stoked we have it for this bathroom remodel. This wasn't a very difficult installation. And if you don't count the electrical component, it's almost like hanging a picture. In this situation, we did a full remodel of this bathroom. So we had access all the way back to the studs. So we're able to do all the thorough planning, kind of like a new construction situation and ran the wire power and blocking appropriately. Now, if this was a bathroom that's already done, you just want to add this mirror. It might be a little bit trickier to do the electrical component because that's the, the big trick with this mirror is getting the power to where you want it so you can plug it in to get the light. And so you usually want that on a switch like we did here. However, if you're not good with electricity, just call an electrician. It'll be an easy job for them once the electrical outlet's where you need it. Like I said, this is pretty much just like hanging a pitcher. And for a small bathroom, I really think this is going to jazz things up. Very happy, very impressed. Thanks for watching.